again, it's wonderful to see our members and our visitors and our guests. Uh, if you haven't signed the guest book, I think most of you have, but if you haven't signed the guest book, uh, there's one at the front, one at the back. Be sure and do that before you leave. We want to have a record of all those who attended these events. Um, we're very Be sure and take time to look at the contents of our Cornerstone Time Capsule uh, that are spread out in the, uh, in the Mac behind us. Uh, we were very pleased to discover what good shape the contents were in after being sealed up for so very long. Uh, we're very tickled and thankful that they're in as good a shape as they are. Um, if you were at lunch, you already know that our Burmese friends from Clarksville won't be joining us today as we planned. Uh, some of them had contracted COVID, and it was the feeling of everyone concerned that their visit should be postponed for now. You'll notice I use the word postponed. Um, even though our formal uh, anniversary events will end this weekend, we can still celebrate throughout the remainder of the year. And God willing, uh, we'll be very pleased to have them come and sing for us at a later time. After all, we both share a common connection to Adoniram Judson. Yeah. Uh, today, we're so pleased that um, we have with us Dr. Jerry Kane, uh, Chancellor of none other than Judson University in Elgin, Illinois. I remember this now. I think it's because you've got every dog in there. <laughs> but, um, folks, I've been wanting to meet and introduce this gentleman for six months. We've been corresponding back and forth since since uh, January, and I've come to admire and respect Dr. Kane. He's a highly educated, distinguished gentleman in every sense of those words. Just to give you a little information about him, he was born in Fullerton, California, spent time growing up in Hyco, Texas, and Lovington, New Mexico. He received a Bachelor of Science in Religion and Psychology from Eastern New Mexico University, and his master's degree in historical ethics from Baylor. He holds four honorary doctor degrees. Uh, he and his wife, Linda, have two sons, Michael Ryan and Jeffrey Bryan. Enjoys bike riding. How many miles a day do you say you ride? He rides eight miles a day. Uh, he enjoys gardening, researching Adoniram Judson, history, and following Kansas City Royals baseball. There's probably nobody on the planet that knows more about Adoniram Judson and the history of schools that were named after him than Dr. Kane. Here now to tell us about those various Judson schools, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Jerry Kane, Chancellor of Judson University. Let's give him a warm first batch. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. I am glad to be here. This is uh, a bucket list experience for me. I have spent the uh, last 20 years uh, charting the uh, names, places, and people named for Adoniram Judson. And uh, there were only two in Arkansas until today. I met Judson Browning today. You got me, Judson Browning, back there under that window. That we'd call the cry room back in my church. So, uh, so three in Judson, three, three entities in Arkansas named for Adoniram Judson. Uh, Judson Browning being one of those. The other one was a Judson Baptist Church up at. Um, Bella Vista. Does anybody know Bella Vista? First of all, does anybody know that Judson Baptist Church? Well, they changed their name about five years ago. And the third entity in Arkansas named for Judson is here. This is where I wanted to come. I am so glad to be here and thank you for stumbling around and finding, finding me on those early phone conversations last winter, Chuck. I want to talk to you today about um, the educational legacy of Adoniram Judson. 
we've got this technology that every time I point and say, Tim, a new slide comes up, okay? <laughs> it's really high tech, tech, high tech kind of stuff around here. Now, I'm going to let you, uh, uh, well, uh, Pastor Kerry said this would be all right. Uh, you can interrupt and ask questions in, in the sermon tomorrow morning, okay? So uh, you can interrupt and ask questions this afternoon. So if you've got a question, this is, it may sound lecturish, but uh, I, I don't want it to be lecturish. I want you to, if there's something that's a curiosity, let's, let's, uh, let's chase a rabbit. Uh, if you want to. I've got a lot of rabbits that I'll turn loose, and let's see if any of them take. But today, let's just do the educational legacy of uh, Adoniram Judson Tim. We're going to walk through the, ten, the six schools that have been named for uh, Adoniram or Ann Judson, all right? How many schools were named for, um, for the railroad tycoon Vander, Vanderbilt, Cornelius Vanderbilt. One. How many schools were named for the, uh, well, railroad magnet? Uh, um, I just lost him. I'm an old man. California, California. Just say one, okay? Just say one. <laughs> I should have wrote all this stuff down, you know, rather. There has never been another person who's been named for so many institutions. In 1870, your school will start in 1871. In 1870, the second most recognized name in the United States was Adoniram Judson. The first most recognized name in 1870 was Abraham Lincoln. Are you with me? And six schools have been named for him. And you cherish one of them right here in your corner of the world. So let's go ahead and make a quick run through some of these. Uh, I'll spend a little time on all of them, maybe a little more time on this one. But let's start and whenever you think I'm getting to number six, you can wake up or wake your husband up, and you'll know we're getting close to the end. Okay, Tim, here we go. First one's going to be in Georgia. Are you ready? No, let's put it in Alabama. Uh, Marion, Alabama, Judson College, Marion, Alabama. Now, note the dates of Judson College. That's going to be 1838 and 2021. Last year, we closed down a Judson College. Tim, Marion, Alabama. It was the fifth oldest girls' school in the United States of America, started by the uh, Berean Baptist Church. A Baptist church wanted to start a college, start a college for women, and they did it in 1838. Now, can you think... What cultural and social movements were happening in 1838? Now, Ann Judson, Ann Judson died in 1826. She's been dead for 12 years, and they start a woman's college named for her. Whenever you read the seal, which is in the floor of the uh, main administration building, still there today, it says... Uh, truth and light, light and truth, lux and veritas. Do you see that closely? I don't know if you can see from where you are, but there is uh, three lamps of light across the seal. There is an open Bible there. 1838. Okay, Tim. Siloam Springs Baptist Church started that school. But in 1834, that's five years later, they moved it to the Alabama Baptist Convention. So the Alabama Baptist Convention owned it until it disbanded last summer. Its main founder was Milo Jewett, and uh, he was a, a dreamer, a pastor, much like your pastor uh, who started this school in Essex. 
uh, Judsonian. Let me get just to the diminution of that school. It had three things working against it, which caused it to close one year ago. One year ago, now this is kind of close to me because I have lectured at that school, I've taught there in uh, summer classes, and so I kind of know the turf, I know the buildings, I know the people there. Uh, first of all, in 2021, it's small town America. It's hard to get an 18-year-old woman to go to small town America. You got me? Number two, it was a woman's college. It's hard to get an 18-year-old woman to go to, to a woman's college now. You got me? And the third thing that killed it was COVID. All right? So this is not old history. This is last summer's front page news all over Alabama. 2019, they had 268, play with the numbers, 268 students enrolled. 2020, two years ago, that had dropped to 145. Cut it in half. Are you with me? We were in COVID last summer, 20, uh, two, two summers ago. And last summer, 2021, it looked like they were going to start with 80 students. So the first Judson College, the first Judson College folded last summer, 2021. All of their records are stored now at Samford University, which was also started in small town Marion, Alabama. But eventually it moved and has survived. It was started actually as a men's school and Judson was started as a women's school. Okay, Tim, should you have some money right now, you can go to Marion, Alabama and buy that building. <laughs> All right, you can buy a whole campus if you want. That's Jewett Hall, that's the main administration building. It's still sitting there right now. It is a stately, stately, beautiful building Jewett Hall, named for that founder, Milo Jewett, uh, Tim. And uh, this is the old Carnegie Library, but the Carnegie Library was turned into the Alabama Women's uh, Hall of Fame building. You got me? So if you're an Alabama woman, your picture is in that Hall of Fame. Are any of you in there? All right. That building will probably continue on its own uh, apart from the university. The other building that is significant is the WMU. Good old WMU. WMU went together and built a dormitory there. <coughs> and that's where I always stayed because that's where the guest lodging was. One more, Tim. In their last years, trying to maintain an enrollment, the first Judson College started an uh, equestrian program and thinking that would attract women. Women dominate equestrian programs. It didn't work. And this was part of their publicity photos. You see there's western riding and there's also hunter jumper riding and you see one of the women dressed as a western rider. The other one dressed as a hunter jumper and uh, a noble effort, and last summer in the, demo, in the dissolution of the school, we sold the last of the horses. Okay, first Judson College, have you got it? What state was it in? Yes. Its uniqueness was? Yes. Women, women's college. Named for Anne Hasseltine Judson, named for Adoniram's wife. Okay, we're ready to go to number two. By the way, there's a quiz. Did I tell you there was a quiz? <laughs> there is a second Judson College, and this one was started in, in uh, Illinois. Are you with me? We're going to Illinois, Tim. All right. There is no picture. Tim, go ahead to the next one. There is no picture, no evidence of this college left. Though I did find the plat of Mount Palatine, Illinois. And it specifically was laid out 
to have a college up there in block number three. Are you with me? And the streets are named over here on the left, State Street, and then Academy Street, and then Washington Street, and then Villa Street. Are you with me? Now this also was started by a Baptist church, the Baptist church at Mount Palatine, Illinois. Now naturally they didn't live in, 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 in towns, they lived all at least 40 or 80 or 120 acres apart from each other. And one of the guys in the town was known for the ba being the Baptist Tavern. No, not for that. <laughs> Just because he put up all of the people that came through town. And so everybody would stay at, uh, at his place. And then it was the pastor by the name of Thomas Powell who laid this plot out. You're going to hear that story replayed in Judsonia, Arkansas. But it was the pastor who laid out this plot, knowing that the Illinois Central Railroad was going to be building that way, and they were going to start a college. And so sure enough, they started Judson College in 1846. Let me get that a little straight. In 1846, it started as Mount Palatine Academy. Mount Palatine, Illinois. It's up by Peru and LaSalle. Does anybody know enough about Illinois to care? Okay, thank you. It's up by just to the left, which would be a little bit west and south of La LaSalle and Peru. And so uh, um, started as Mount Palatine Academy, and then in 1850 changed the name, 1846, 1850 they changed the name, and then it closes in 1859. So it lasts 13 years. Um, the um, interesting thing that happened was they weren't making it in 1846 under the name Mount Palatine Academy. Adoniram Judson died in 1850 and they disbanded Mount Palatine Academy and turned around and started Judson College taking advantage of the fact that Adoniram Judson had just died. And what was the most second most recognized name in America in 1870? Well, it was very recognizable. So that was it. Their dream was that the Illinois Central Railroad was coming that way, and it would make it to Mount Palatine. Well, it didn't make it. Riding on the city of New Orleans, Illinois Central, Monday morning trains. Anybody pay attention to the Illinois Central Railroad? Uh, Arlo Guthrie did. Well, this was going to be a big deal. So the college did not get the railroad, and it closed in 1859. They sold it on the steps of the courthouse because it was bankrupt. Sad story. There's two things about that college that keep my attention. Are you ready? <clears throat> One of them is called the Judson Precedent in Illinois Law. Now, you guys that are on boards, you gals that are on boards, watch this. While they were under the name Mount Palatine Academy, they accumulated a lot of debt. And so they just disbanded that school and disbanded the debts. Turned around the next month, the same board started Judson College. <laughs> well, all the debtors went to, went to court on that. <laughs> and the Judson precedent is the new school has to pay the debts of the old school, all right? So if you're going to disband your operation because... Uh, You've got debts. Uh, you can't do that in Illinois because of the Judson precedent. I've got one other sentence here on Judson College number two. Are you ready? In the dissolution of that college in 1859 on the steps of the courthouse, the buildings and property were sold to the Catholics. The buildings and property are to be permanently maintained as a school 
failure to do so will cause the property to revert back to the original owners. The Catholics are not using it as a school. You got me? If you want to go to Illinois, you can probably get four acres here free. <laughs> Nobody's interested? You can get a full campus in Marion, Alabama. You can get four acres in all of those city plots if you'll go to Mount Palatine, Illinois. Ah, oh, well, nobody seems interested. Okay, so anyway, this is all happening in the 1840s, 1850s. Tim, give me another picture. I don't have... Give me another one. Go ahead, Tim, to the next one. That's a picture of the Illinois Central... Uh, engine back in uh, 18, uh, 1850s. And go to the next one, Tim. And there was a Baptist boy who started a law office at that same time in, uh, in Springfield, Illinois. He grew up in uh, Pigeon Fork Baptist Church and, uh, and he heard about Adoniram Judson whenever he was a kid. And sure enough, he became a lawyer for the Illinois Central Railroad and eventually became president of the United States. He was the one doing the law work for the Illinois Central and uh, a Abraham Lincoln who was doing the work for the Illinois Central Railroad whenever the college closes when it does not get the railroad. Now I'm sure that's more than you ever wanted to know. All right. Okay, let's go to the third one. You got two of them down. How many do we have to go through? Six. Okay, let's go to the third one. And what state is this? Okay, Tim, go ahead. Go ahead. So we move into your part of the picture. Now you can tell this story better than I can. All right? You know the local history better than I can. And so I, I'm going to let you argue with me. I'm going to let you challenge me. Uh, and I'm going to let you be right. You better know your local history uh, more than, than I do. Okay. So you realize that there was a little community that had uh, started here called uh, Prospect Bluff. I, it has a few other names, but mainly Prospect Bluff. The Judson University, number one, Judson University, number one, was started here, school number three. The first two were started by Baptist churches. This one was not started by a Baptist church. This was started by an interloper, entrepreneur, and might I suggest you locals might have called him a carpetbagger. Coming in from Illinois bringing in a group of Yankees to live here and start a university. Actually, you were second choice. He tried to go to Prairie County first, and they didn't want him. <laughs> and so the people here at Prospect Bluff were kinder to him than, uh, than uh, people were in, uh, in Prairie County, so he came here. He tried to bring, he brought about 40 people with him, and they started the town of Judsonia. If you'll do the records, you realize that in Prospect Bluff, the uh, premier street was going to be Van Buren Street. And then as you drive up Van Buren Street, suddenly now the name changes from Van Buren Street to what? And so... Judsonia is parked just on the north side of Prospect Bluff, and that premier street comes up and changes names right in the middle of town. Well, it's because this guy comes in from Illinois, and he brings with him a group of Baptists to start Judson University. Now, the idea is not new. The idea is not new. I'm going to chase a few rabbits here. Most of them are still listening, all right? This is not new that a group of Baptists would do this kind of thing. Um, 
there was a guy by the name of Parker who in 1840, uh, let me get my dates right, 1830, uh, when did Texas, when did Texas become a republic? 1835, right? 1836? Who's going to help me? 1835? All right, Texas becomes a republic. Well, what had happened was that uh, when Mexico broke away from Spain, Mexico wrote their own, when Mexico broke away from Spain, they wrote their own constitution. And in that constitution, it said, no Protestant church shall be started in Mexico. Well, now, if you get a Baptist preacher reading that kind of thing, what does it say? Well, it's all right to start a Baptist church in Illinois and move it to Texas. You got me? No Protestant church shall be started in, in uh, Mexico. And so by a guy by the name of Jesse Parker starts a Baptist church in Illinois and moves them all the way down into Mexico and is now trying to defend himself. Anybody been in Texas long, you know, of uh, Cynthia Ann Parker, Cynthia Ann Parker that was captured by uh, the Indians, grew up to be the mother of Quanah Parker. All that. She was in that original group of Baptists that organized the church in um, Illinois and moved it into Mexico. Uh, well, anyway, a similar thing is happening here. There's a group of Baptists in Illinois that move down here to the corner of Prospect Bluff. They start their own town. They start their own university. And so Judson University begins. Um, are you with me? Are you still following me? All right. And uh, um, the elementary school is now where the original building was. Am I right or wrong? Okay, the original building for Judson University was there. That building that you see on the screen is the one, is the one that was there, 1871. Now, what had just ended in 1865? Civil War. Civil War. Can you feel the cultural tension of 40 Yankees moving into Confederate territory. All right. So anyway, the uh, college is starting, and it does an amazing job for a few years, a few years being four or five years. It got up to 100 students. They had a unique curriculum. The curriculum was strong in sciences. That means biology, and uh, geology, particularly here, right here in River City. Uh, you got me? And one of the uniquenesses of uh, Judson University right here was they taught telegraphy. Telegraphy. You know what that is? All right. The Illinois Central is going to need uh, telegraph operators, you know, to... And, and out of telegraphy came a, a, a business curriculum. And so the curriculum that I found is really an interesting, positive, forward-thinking kind of curriculum. Only had five professors and 100 students teaching all, all, of those, uh, all of those kinds of classes. And it evidently had a very strong um, music-driven uh, part of the curriculum. It might have been that everybody had to be in the choir. It might have been. <laughs> but uh, Judson University sparkled. It had um, a, a, a dynamic leader who was energetic, who had a vision, but it didn't have strong local support and it had absolutely no money. And so... Uh, Reverend uh, Forey is spending all of his time trying to raise money. And then there is a note in the, in the, in the, uh, in the trustee minutes that says the Baptist Church asked if they could meet on our campus. The trustees voted and it was 
it was granted. Uh, a unique thing, the university was significant in starting the church. Does that make sense? Now in the first two that we've noticed, the church started the school. But here it was different. Uh, Tim, uh, move forward here and let's see what's going on. So here in town, all right, let's do a little bit about the town. And again, I'll let you know more about that than, than uh, I do. So you have five streets here in the town named for the Judsonia and the Judson heritage and history. And so that Premier Street is attached to Van Buren Street, and it's going to be Judson Street, all right? So you got Judson Street. And then over to the left, which would be to the west side, I guess, you have Hasseltine, all right? And Hasseltine runs right behind the back of this church. You, I, you do know that, that you butt up against Hasseltine Street. The mistake that Mr. Forey, Reverend Forey did, was that he was very good in telegraphy, very good in biology, but he was not good at spelling. And your Hasseltine Street is misspelled, okay? And I'm not going to worry about it. Don't take it to the city council. Just let it go, all right? <laughs> it's got two S's in it, and they misspelled it here. So Hasseltine Street and Judson Street, and then what's next to Judson? Is, it, uh, is the next one, um, is the next one uh, Boardman? Wade. Wade. Wade is the next one. Wade was a missionary that worked with uh, uh, Judson, and he codified the Bible. This is the Bible in, uh, in Corinth. And if our Corinth choir was here today, they would so deeply appreciate Jonathan Wade. Jonathan Wade gave them the Bible. Now, Judson put the Bible into Burmese. But Wade put it into Karen, which is their individual language. Here is that Bible, and here is a Karen hymnal of 1867. You're welcome to come by and look at this. Now, let me take a quick minute on the Karens just because um, I hope you can continue with them. The Karens were animists. When Judson got to Burma, he was working with Buddhists. That was the dominant group. That was the language group. There was a small group called Karens that were animist. And they had a legend. They had a tradition that said, the white man will come on the boat with the book and will tell us our future. Adoniram Judson shows up in Burma, the first white man they had ever seen. And he carries with him the Bible. I've got mine there. He had the book. And he will tell us our future. And the Karen soaked up the gospel immediately. And 90% of the Karens today are Christians because of that tradition. A white man will come on a ship with a book and will tell us our future. And so you have about 100 or 120 of them living in Clarksville now because they've been refugees run out of uh, Burma. All right, anyway. Okay, third, uh, uh, Judge, uh, Wade from Judson, we go to Wade. Wade is the guy who translates the Bible into Korean. And then we get to Boardman. Boardman is the one that baptizes the first Korean. Uh, Kothabu. Kothabu was a slave. Kothabu had been a slave. <laughs> well, you get to be a slave because you're a criminal. Kothabu had been a criminal, probably had killed over 30 people and was sold into slavery. Judson bought him out of slavery. You got me? Bought him out of slavery and freed him 
taught him the Bible, and he became the first believer, but Boardman baptized him. I know that's getting confusing and that's splitting hairs. You got Hasseltine, you got Judson Street, you got Wade Street, which is the guy who put it into uh, uh, the, Burm, uh, the Korean language. You got Boardman Street, because Boardman is the guy that baptized the first Korean. But he's baptizing one that Adoniram Judson brought to the Lord. Whew. And then your next street is what? Wayland. Now, Wayland wasn't a missionary, Wayland was the president of Brown University. And this is his. Memoirs of Adoniram Judson. He wrote the story of Adoniram Judson after Judson died. <coughs> this was published in 1853. It's older than you are, Chuck. <laughs> All right, let me, let me do, uh, <coughs> hit me one more here. Just a few notes about this town and this, uh, and about this uh, university that you had here. 1871 uh, to uh, 1883. <coughs> we need to do some study about the Baptist College colony. That's the way he organized those 40 people to come here. <coughs> I want to know if this was a dry town before they got here, or did the Baptists coming from the north vote it a dry town? I want to know about strawberries. Um, Forey evidently brought strawberries with him to Arkansas. <coughs> Chuck, get me a drink of water. Please, this is getting dry. And the other significant thing that comes out of this is the missionaries that come out of this church. <coughs> it's the university that starts the church, names it all for Judson, and the missionaries come out here. Uh, Smith, Charles Smith. And then the Sinstrom daughters. And um, Browning, are you still here, Mr. Browning? <coughs> and you can name even more of those uh, than I can. And are you going to make your Lottie Moon Christmas offering goal this year? Yeah, are we? We're still doing missions? The last thing about this little town that you should be uh, proud of, it's a different town, okay? Um, in my research, and again, I don't do the local research. I have to fly at 30,000 feet and see the bigger picture. The bigger picture is when the Civil War ended, um, a lot of these fraternal groups started popping up. Up north in Yankee Land, it was the G.A.R., the Grand Army of the Republic. And if you had fought in the Civil War on the side of the north, you could be a member of the Grand Army of the Republic, the G.A.R. It's like the VFW. They got me in the modern VFW. If you've been a soldier, you can be a part of the VFW. There's only two GAR monuments in this state. One of them's in Siloam Springs. It didn't get there till 1920s. The first one was here in this town, Judsonia. I drove out there today to look at it. There's 16 Union soldiers buried there around there. Why is this town a little different from any other town in the county? Does anybody see what I'm saying? The college starts the church. There evidently is some civility toward those that are different from us. And I don't know 
how hard it is for a pastor. Terry Tricky, I have a great respect for you, but I never met you till today. Trying to bring people together who are diverse and who are different and who are looking at the world through, uh, through different um, TV channels. Is that okay to say that? And some of them focus only on this TV channel, others look, focus only on that TV channel. But evidently, this church could bring them together and they could lay their differences outside on the lawn. They could come in, sing praises to Jesus and love Jesus and work for the cause of Christ in spite of their political and, and economic divisions. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? And can this church now, 150 years later, still do what they were doing back then? Of course, a bunch of Yankees and a bunch of rebels coming under the same roof. Um, go for it, Pastor. Go for it. This congregation for 150 years has done something different, uh, and I hope you'll keep that up. Okay, okay, we're going to have to speed on because I'm running out of voice, and we've only got three of them done. Okay, Tim, are you with me? There's the monument to the GAR. Keep going, Tim, keep going. Now we're going to get to the fourth Judson College, Rangoon, Burma. It's 1872. Now your Judson University started in what year? 1871, this is 1872. Your missionaries, Adoniram Judson, has now died. He died in 1850, so it's 20 years after that. They want to start a college in Burma. And so, go Tim. And so, uh, uh, they start with the, uh, they start off in 1872 uh, wanting to educate the Karen. Remember, the Karens are this tribal group that's looking for a white man with a Bible on a ship. <laughs> and uh, so the Karens are coming. The Karens are wanting to be baptized. The Karens are giving their lives to Jesus, and they, but they can't read. They're the poorest people in all of Burma. They are the lower belly. Uh, if it were a caste system, they were the underdogs, the outcasts. All right. So anyway, they are showing up, and so the missionaries decide to start a college. So they start a college for the Karens, 1872, and it goes through several name changes because it keeps growing. And by 1874, it becomes Rangoon Baptist College. In 1877, it becomes Judson College. So 1877, it takes the name Judson College. It starts a campaign, again, your missionaries are doing this, uh, in 1927 to build a new campus in Rangoon. And so they start raising money, and they get enough money from uh, John D. Rockefeller, and they your Baptist missionaries build a new campus. 1927, 1930, they move in. 1929, what hits? The economic depression hits. And, um, but they've got a wonderful, big, bright, shiny new campus. 1950, after World War II, the government takes over. The British leave. The government takes over. And uh, 1965, the socialists take over and closed down all the private schools. So Rangoon University, Judson University, closes in 1965. So it lasts from 1872 to 1965. Now that's getting into our lifetime. Are you with me? You might want to ask questions about that. Next picture, Tim. Whenever John D. Rockefeller helped build this campus, they built the Judson Church Chapel, okay? That's the tower to the Judson Church Chapel. Now it is a part of 
Yangon University, Rangoon has been taken over by the socialists. It's changed its name to Yangon. There's a military coup again in 2001. They have them let out every 10 years. So that's a part now of the University of Rangoon. The tallest building on the campus was built by U Baptist. And it is the photo center of all the pictures taken of the University of Yangon. And if you look close up on the very top of the tallest building at the University of Rangoon, there's a cross. Now they try to block that out in a lot of their doctored uh, PR pictures, but it is the centerpiece of the, and everybody knows it as the Judson Chapel. It's still called the Judson Chapel. I've been there, I spoke there. It's uh, closed down through the week as a church, but they open it up on Sunday, and it'll be packed every Sunday for church. Then they close it back down, but they need that tower to represent the university. That is so interesting to me. The fourth one, the fourth one is in Rangoon. Are we still moving on? Uh, next picture, okay, graduates. Now let's go to number five. Number five, we'll be quick here. This is in uh, Oregon. Judson College from 1956 to 1985. Now you guys are probably Baptists that don't understand this, but Baptists sometimes fight each other. <laughs> you, you do understand that? You don't understand that. I don't understand it. I just know what happened. So the, the, what was then called the Northern Baptist Convention had a battle, the Northern Baptists and then the Conservative Baptists. And so up in Oregon, uh, up in Oregon, go ahead to the next slide if you wish. They uh, decide we're going to have a peaceful fight. And so the Northern Baptists take the camp and the Conservative Baptists take the seminary. The seminary will be... Western Seminary in Portland and Denver Seminary in Denver. Anybody, who, who was I talking to about Denver today? And then one gets the camp, one gets the seminary. We're going to divide up the seminary. We're going to divide up. We only have one college. Well, we're going to start another college for the conservatives. So the conservatives start a college. So they'll have one because the northerners have one. And they name it Judson. Name it Judson College. It's a two-year school. It never becomes uh, a, a four-year school. Uh, but it is in Portland originally, and then it moves to the Dales, trying to find a better place to grow, and it just doesn't work. Keep going, Tim. There are the president, one of the presidents of that Judson College is still alive. I talked to him over the phone a month or so ago, and he listed here a bunch of wonderful successes, but I'm not going to worry about that. Tim, give me a picture of the Judson College in the Dales. All right, give me another picture of Judson College in the Dales. Judson in the Dales. And then let's go to the sixth, Judson. You about had enough? <laughs> if he was really... The most popular person in the world, if he had had more colleges, but we all have to stop at six. So we go back to Illinois. And that's the Judson College where I served as the president for 14 years. So Judson College, uh, I'll go ahead to the next slide. You'd be welcome there at uh, Judson University. Uh, 1,300 students uh, enroll. Um, Colleges now have to pick a masterpiece and make it work. And so while I was there, we picked the masterpiece of architecture. And uh, there was only one other Christian college, and that would be Notre Dame, if you, I still call that Christian. They had an architecture school, nobody else did. 
So Judson University starts an architecture school. I have over 250 majors in architecture. Have uh, uh, three doctoral programs, two of them in education, one of them in business administration. All right, keep going, Tim. And those are the talking points. If you want to ask more questions, 119 acres, 18 buildings. Next slide. And by the way, you're always asking for inventories and reports. And plant operations, on their last report to me, said we had 500 and 555 toilets on this campus. <laughs> Why do I remember that? And I can't remember Stanford University, you know, where this uh, big railroad mogul was. There's the campus on the edge of the Fox River. Oh, I could tell you stories about that. Next picture. That's the architecture building and a library. Uh, it's a sustainable building. It uses no more electricity than it produces. And uh, it was amazing to put that together with a bunch of Christian architects. This is the south, and the sun is shining on those windows. But now in July, every window is shaded, and there's not one piece of solar gain because glass is being hit by direct sunlight. But if you'll go with me there in January, all of those windows here on this south side are hit directly by sunlight. <laughs> And the building is being heated by solar gain. This is Chicago land, okay? Chicago winters. And the building makes as much electricity as it uses. Uh, it's a commitment to God's creation. Do me one more. And those students at the present JU send their greetings to all of you at the original JU here in Judson University at Judsonia, Arkansas. Well, I probably went a few minutes more. You kind of knew that was going to happen. Okay, we're going to have a test. We're going to have a test. And if you pass, if you pass, you get a prize. Question number one. I'm going to ask this side over here, question number one. Which school was named for Anne Hasseltine? And the answer is? Yeah, you could just say Judson, and that'd be a good answer. <laughs> Okay, second question, here in the middle. Which school in Illinois did not get a railroad? Gosh, you guys are so good. <laughs> Number three, which school in Arkansas was started by a group of northern immigrants? You guys are just brilliant. <laughs> what school in Burma was formed to educate Karens? <laughs> oh my goodness. What school in Oregon was a two-year Christian school? <laughs> and what school in northern Chicago has Jerry's Cafe in the Weber Academic Building. Yes. <laughs> ah, you guys are so good. All right. No, I, you can't name a building for me, but they named the cafe. So the cafe is there, Jerry's Cafe 
If you want a good latte, go to Judson University. All right, questions? <clears throat> we can chase rabbits, but I'd like to stay with these six schools. Names for you and your... Okay. I'll listen, Gary. The church was established in 72, 72 to 83. School closes in 83, but that building is still standing there. So I'm betting the church is still meeting in that building as Browning starts building the next 1884 building that's going to come. Um, but they overlap that time. Now, the first two, or is it the first three? Presidents of the university are pastors of the church, filling that role. And again, they've got the Yankees and the rebels here. The Civil War has just ended. This is still open wounds. Wow. Is there a standing picture of Martin Foy? No. I've looked for Foy. Uh, he had his, no, the answer is no. I've never found pictures of him. He had, uh, he, he's from New York, born and raised in New York. So he had that uh, feel growing up. But then he moved to South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia, and he worked in three different schools, all of which closed. Then he went to Chicago, was working at a Baptist college in Chicago, which closed. So he comes to Arkansas, <laughs> and it closed. Okay. So he tries. No, I've never seen a picture of Forey, but he has a constant record. Now, he was a, quite an entrepreneur. I don't want him to be dissed. He was a good man. Uh, uh, and his, um, I've got to work on the Chowan School in North Carolina. He sold shares in a college. You could buy a share in a college for $25. All right? Anybody want to buy Bitcoin? Or shares in a college? Uh, you got me? It's a risk. You'll get 6% interest. Okay. And so he was creating a, an entrepreneurial um, um, academic college program. And he, he tried it many places. I think he was noble. He was not he was not in this to make himself rich. So that's why I'm not wanting to use the term carpetbagger. He would he was not trying he had a noble idea, a good idea, and he put the town and the gown together in the, right here. But in this church he put the town and the gown and the crown Together. Now, Carrie, I don't know if you ever read your windows, but there are several that have the crown here. Uh, the town, the gown, and the crown, the empire of Jesus Christ, the uh, kingdom of God together. Okay, Sean, I need three helpers to help me out. All right, I need three helpers to come up here. <clears throat> Three helpers, stand down there. I'm giving you an offering plate. Take the bottom one. You got me? Take the bottom one. Take the bottom one. Now this is a backwards offering. We're going to give them something and not ask for them. All right? Because they did so well on the test, you all get a medallion from Judson University II. <laughs> that medallion is good for one free coffee at Jerry's Cafe. <laughs> Eleven fifty one North State Street, Elgin, Illinois, on the corner of State Street and uh, 
I-90 headed toward Beloit, Michigan. All right, so guys, pass those out and let's have a, a reverse offering. <laughs> Make sure that our musicians get one. All right. There we go. <laughs> no, it doesn't have a, well, it does have a date on it, but the date's not valid. Don't worry about it. Okay, well, thank you all for putting up with this today. Thank you guys for your help here on this silly little experiment that we did. Okay. So this is uh, the medallion from the, the, the present Judson University. And again, on behalf of that school, we send you our greetings saying we are so proud to be a part of the parade of those people who have committed their lives to Jesus and to the gospel and to good learning, good thinking, and uh, good professional skills. Um, we still do chapel every Wednesday at Judson University. So please show up. You'll enjoy chapel. If you don't mind standing up through all the songs. Um, we still do chapel. <coughs> we hold the life and teachings of Jesus as our model for life and living. Um, we hold a um, world leaders conference every year which some world leader has come. And by the way, we had Queen Noor a couple of years ago from Jordan come be our speaker. Um, uh, Gorbachev was uh, one of my speaker, and uh, George Bush, the, the second George Bush. Condoleezza Rice, she was so brilliant. Condoleezza Rice, you know, she was Secretary of State, spoke excellent Russian. We have a lot of international students at the present Judson University because we're following Adoniram Judson. So international students should be. And I remember an international student standing up back there and asking Condoleezza Rice a question. And she could tell by his accent that his English was a second language. And she started speaking in Russian to him. And he was from Ukraine. And it was the first time he had heard a native tongue since he had been there. And it was uh, heart moving to listen to him and listen to her talk back and forth and never know what they were saying. <laughs> and somehow that image is so vital now as the political scenes change. 
Well, thank you for planning committee for letting me come. Tomorrow afternoon, we will just do the life of Adoniram Judson and his significance. And so we'll focus only on Judson from 1877 to, I mean, 1788, 1788 to 1850, uh, and just know the man, Adoniram Judson. Thank you very much for letting me come. <laughs> Thank you.